If you're a waterfront buyer, I'm going to tell you what you need to know before you buy so you don't end up buying a property you can't utilize the way you want because it's near a body of water. And we're starting now. Hi, I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Vernon Salt Fowler, and I personally have bought and sold numerous lakefront properties, and I was also born, raised, and currently live on Okanagan Lake. I've watched with interest as the regulations on the lake get tougher and tougher year by year, and I think it's really important for anyone buying on the waterfront to know the differences between buying a house in town and buying a house on the lake. Lakefront property is subject to many regulations. By no means do I profess to know all of them or even know how they will apply in every situation. However, I'm gonna give you the broad strokes here of the types of regulations involved. But please know the final word on any of this is beyond the scope of this video. These approvals are government regulated and subject to approval and subject to change. Let's start by understanding that all water in BC is owned by the Crown and is strictly regulated. Understanding the appropriate regulations and definitions associated with buying, building and renovating or developing lakeshore property can be crucial to ensure your present and your future plans for your lakefront property are even possible. There are three important considerations relating to the riparian regulations that you as a lakefront buyer want to investigate before purchasing. If you don't plan to rebuild or renovate or change anything with the property you're buying, then none of this necessarily matters at this point. However, it's always good to know what you're up against in the event that your plans change in the future or for future resale. So one is the riparian area protection regulation. No doubt you've heard the riparian area mentioned. Riparian areas are areas bordering on streams, lakes and wetlands that link water to land. So these areas are important for biodiversity and provide valuable habitat for many species of flora and fauna. The riparian area protection regulation is provincial legislation that requires local governments to enact bylaws that protect riparian areas during development. A riparian area development permit is required for any development activity within 30 meters of the high water mark of a water body within a riparian development permit area. Please note this is not a building permit. A building permit must also be obtained prior to any construction. The thing is, if you plan to make any changes to this riparian area or within this 30 meter area from the high water mark, then you may need to have your property assessed by a QEP, which is a qualified environmental professional, which usually means a biologist. Number two is riparian rights. Riparian rights refer to the three common law rights of an owner who owns land adjoining public bodies of water. So these three common law rights are, first one is the right of access to deep water. What this means is that the province can't allow someone to build something in front of your property that inhibits your access to the deep water of the lake. So for example, it means that the province can't authorize a marina belonging to someone else fronting your property. This doesn't include anything about a dock that we'll discuss that later. The second common law right is the right of erosion protection. So you can protect your property from erosion, say with a retaining wall. However, specifications need to be met for retaining walls, etc., and and that's far beyond the scope of this video as well. Third is accretion. Accretion is the growth in size of a land area, usually by the gradual and imperceptible accumulation of land by natural causes such as out of the sea or a river. So in British Columbia, the Crown owns all the land below the high water mark and the homeowner owns the land above the high water mark. Now, high water marks can change over time. What your high water mark was 50 years ago is probably different than where it is today. So that means your property line could also change over time. Really, the only way to determine the exact property line of a lakefront property is to hire a BC land surveyor to have a new survey completed to redefine the property, to take into account any accretion or erosion of the property, and to determine the new high water mark. If the high water mark has moved farther out and your current property line is actually inside the high water mark, since you technically own the property right to the high water mark, you can go through the process to include this additional area into your property. Establishing a correct property line would be important for establishing, say, a, a building envelope for a potential build, maybe an addition, and uh, building on the water, constructing a dock, or building a retaining wall. Number three is the foreshore and private moorage. What you should know is property lines extend to, however, do not include the foreshore. 
Now foreshore is the land between the high and low watermarks of the water body. So aquatic crown land is all the land, including the foreshore, from the high water mark out to the limits of provincial jurisdiction. Technically, the homeowner, the upland owner, has no rights to use or possess the water, only a right to access the deep water. That is why permission is required from the provincial crown to build structures that are on or over the foreshore, in other words, a dock. That's why you need a permission. So that's super important for a lakefront buyer. If you're looking at a house with a dock, you need to determine whether an existing dock is conforming or not. In any of contract of purchase and sale, the buyer's realtor should ask for all the documentation relating to the current dock and the buyer should contact BC Front Counter to ensure that a permission can be obtained to utilize a foreshore after the title transfers to the new owner. You have to know that many of the current docks do not comply with the current 2020 dock design regulation, making what is called a general permission unobtainable. And we'll, we'll talk about permissions in a later video. Many of the current docks don't comply with the 2020 dock design regulations, making what is called a general permission unobtainable. However, a specific permission may be granted if the dock was built prior to these new regulations and complied with the regulations in place at that time many don't comply with any regulations ever. That's too involved for this video. However, please watch the next two videos in our series about building on the lake and about building or buying a dock. I'm sure you can probably see why it's so important to call a realtor who specializes in lakefront sales and resort properties when buying or even selling lakefront. Be sure to call the experts at Remax Vernon Salt Fowler and just add salt.